I'm Derek Hullinger. I have a PhD in physics, and I'm going to explain how you find the centripetal force exerted on something if you know its mass and the radius it's traveling in a circle and how fast it's going. So whenever you have something going in a circle, say like this ball, I'm going to swing it around on a string. This string is pulling on this circle, uh, pulling on this ball, making it go in a circle. Otherwise, the ball would just fly off in a straight line. So if we draw this as a circle with a ball traveling in this circle, that ball wants to just keep going straight at any given moment. So you have to have some kind of a force on it that's constantly pulling it away from that straight line. And that force is known as the centripetal force. And it turns out that if you have a mass of a certain, well, a certain mass, and it's traveling at a certain speed, and it's traveling in a circle with a certain radius, it takes a certain amount of force to cause that object to travel in that circle at that speed. And that force, that centripetal force, is just the mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. So let's give it an example. Suppose we have a ball that weighs 10 grams. So 0.01 kilograms. And suppose it's going at a speed of 2 meters per second. So that would be my V. And let's say it's going in a, in a circle with a radius of 0.5 meters. So if we multiply all that together, we get 0.08. And with this in kilograms, meters per second, and meters, the units of this would be newtons. So there's the centripetal force required to make this object go in this particular circle. One thing that you might notice from this equation is if you make it spin faster, it takes more of a force to keep it in that circle because it wants even more to go in a straight line. You can think of it like that. On the other hand, in order to make it go in a tighter circle with a smaller radius, it also takes more force. Also, suppose instead of a, a little ball on this string that I swung around, suppose I had a bowling ball that I was trying to swing around. It would take a lot more force to make that bowling ball go in that same circle at that same speed than it took to make that little tiny ball go in that circle. So this equation predicts all of those relationships.